What's up, Next Level Church? Welcome to day eight of our 21 days of prayer. And our theme for the entire 21 days is make room for more. Because let's be honest, our theme as a church right now is make room for more because that is exactly what we are doing. And I love that during these 21 days, we're reading through the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. And I want to encourage you to grab your soap guide, go to online and get our download our soap guide or get one at your location this weekend. Make sure you're reading these, these chapters with us every single day day. Get into the habit of reading God's Word and then SOAP, S-O-A-P, which is how we apply one verse that we read that day to our everyday lives. So each one of these uh, guided encouragements here over these 21 days are going to run in alignment with our SOAP guide. So today, day eight, we're on Ezra chapter eight. And I want to draw our attention to verse 31. Ezra chapter eight, verse 31, it says this, on the 12th day of the first month, we set out from the Ahava Canal to go to Jerusalem. And then here's the phrase I want us to see. The hand of our God was on us and he protected us. He protected us from enemies and bandits along the way. So today I want to talk about the protection of God, that God's hand brings protection on our life. See, the protection that we are looking for in our life is found in the hand of God being on us. But what's cool about this is if you go back to the beginning of this chapter, we see Ezra leading the people to humble themselves and ask God for guidance and direction with the king. So we see humility and asking God for direction, going God's way, doing life the way God wants us to go. And when we do that, here's what happens. We let our lives come under the protection of the hand of God. See, here's what I think, church family. I think some of us are looking for protection, quote unquote, in the wrong places. We're looking for for protection in our life, so to speak, in the wrong places. So here's my question to you. What would life look like with more of the protection of God on our life? Some of us, we're looking to the government to offer us protection. Can I tell you something? It will always fall short, no matter who's in office, no matter who's in office, protection from the government will always fall short. Some of us are looking for to the economy or to an interest rate to offer some sort of protection to us in our finances. Some of us are looking to our, our job or our own abilities or our employer to be that protection for us. Some of us, we're looking in some other place. Or, and can I just tell you something? The protection we need is from God. I was thinking about like, like swimming like as a little kid. And I remember swimming in our swimming pool we had in Indiana and all through the summer we'd swim and so one one year I got a, a big old super soaker uh, squirt gun remember those water guns called super soakers I got one of those for my birthday and um, other than that you know I like the other little squirt guns we had in our family were just these little bitty things remember those little ones like those 99 cent ones you could buy at the drugstore or whatever I remember so like as soon as I got a super soaker it changed everything for me. Like when my friends would come over, we'd be swimming in the pool and I'd dig out those squirt guns and I would hand those two little squirt guns to my friends and then I had the super soaker. Well, guess what? Those little bitty water guns, they didn't stand a chance against me, man. I had that big old duffer. See, I was protected. You know why? Cause I had a super soaker blaster squirt gun. Hey, listen, if you're looking to anything else in your life for protection, it's like you're trying to fight the battle with a little bitty squirt gun. And and the, the enemy, I'm just telling you, he's sneaky. He's 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 nasty. He's got a super soaker power. Well, the only way to fight that is with super soaker power ourselves. And you know where that comes from? That comes from God. So how do we get that? How do we get that in our life? Let me challenge you today. Come on, we're on day eight. We're in the deep water now. Let me challenge you. Here's how. Humility and obedience. What brings the favor of God on us? What brings the protection of God on us? Humility, when we humble ourselves and when we're living a lifestyle that's in alignment with God's word, with God's way of living life. So here's my challenge to you today, church family. It's time to stop playing games. It's time to stop looking toward to everything else but God to offer us protection. And it's it's time to start looking to God with humility and obedience of how he wants us to live. So here's my question. Where have you been ignoring God's command? Maybe it's in your thought life. Maybe it's in the words you're saying. Maybe it's in your attitude. 
Maybe there's some some lifestyle of sin in your life right now that you know, even as I'm saying this, you're feeling the conviction of the Holy Spirit, not condemnation, that's from the devil, but conviction of the Holy Spirit that he's convicting you saying, son, daughter, I have more for you. I'm trying to protect you. My word is, and my commands in your life are, are not, they're not optional. They're for your protection. And if you're not obeying them, you are exposed. Church family, it's time to engage it today. So here's my prayer challenge for you today. Pray in the car, all the way to work, pray in the car and listen to worship music. Turn on worship music after that. Listen, all the way home today, maybe, you know what, here's my challenge, for the rest of the week, don't do anything except pray in the car out loud and listen to worship music. Turn on worship music on your phone, on your speakers, and and let the, the presence of the Lord saturate your heart. Let me pray for you today. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for each of these, your sons and daughters who are engaging these 21 days of prayer. Lord, we are being challenged today at the core of who you've called us to be, to live differently. And so Lord, right now we humble ourselves. Some of us need to repent. If that's you, just say it. God, I repent. God, forgive me for not going your way, for not honoring you financially with my finances, for not honoring you in my thought life, for for not honoring you with that attitude or with that sin thing in my life. And I, I repent of it. I turn away from that and I turn and I want to obey your word because I know that when I obey your word, that is where protection comes from. Heavenly Father, we pause right now in this moment and we pray for our nation. We pray for the upcoming election. We pray that your will would be done. God, we don't want our will to be done. We want your will to be done because God, you know just what we need in our nation, in our state, in our county, in our cities, in order for you to accomplish your will. So we ask above everything else that your will would be done. God, we pray for our government officials. Father, we lift up our president to you today, our senators, God, our our congressmen and women. Father, we lift up our local authorities, God, our state representatives. Father, we lift up our mayors and and, and all those in authority, Lord, our our county councilmen and women, women. God, our our city councilmen and women. Lord, Father, we lift them up to you, God. We pray for our nation, God, that you would keep creating an atmosphere in our nation where the gospel can go to the ends of the earth. Lord, that's the cry of our heart. Father, we pray for that today. God, I thank you for each one of us. Lord, you're taking us deeper. You're calling us higher. May we live with humility and obedience to your word today in Jesus' name. And everyone who agreed with that prayer said, amen. Love you, church family. See you tomorrow.